Okay, let's have a look and see how we're going to solve the problem with tabular data um, on a website. Um, first of all, I'm just going to type in data and use blank spaces to format the, the information and let's see what happens. So here we go. Um, we call it heading one, couple of spaces, heading two, some more, heading three, heading five, heading six. You can add more if you want to, I'm not going to be bothered. Um, make these things bold because we want them as headings. Right. Still bold. Um, data one. Just this way here. Data one. Couple of spaces. Data two. More spaces. Data three. Data four. Oops, change this one to four. We go. Data five. We go another one. Data. Data. This can be any information. I'm just typing in data. As a placeholder. Right, let's update this page and we're going to see what it looks like when we view it in the front end. There it is. It looks nice, not too bad. <coughs> now, watch what happens if we simulate a smaller screen. It's a smaller, let's say, a, a tablet or a mobile phone or something. You see what happens here. It's all messed up and just doesn't look good. So let's go back to and go and try and fix that problem. <coughs> Edit responsive table. And we go and we delete this in from here. Okay, one way to do it is to add a table. Now, I know tables is so outdated, it's not even funny, but there is places, as you can see, that there is a call for tables. So, we tables, um, we want rows, let's say three rows, and we want five columns wide, and we make it 100% width. And we say, okay, so there's my table. And we go again, adding one. Heading two, heading three, heading four, heading five, and data one, data two, data three, data four. Data five, go. data, 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 just pushing tab every time. Okay, let's go and save it now and see what happens. Update button there. Reload our page. And it's looking a lot better already. It's shrinking the, uh, the compressing the um, table and things start to look as we expect them to be All right now the problem that we're going to run into at some stage is as you can see here we're very small now um, the right column or our fourth column of data is missing and there's no ways we can get at it so that's another problem that we need to solve now um, that is where xms systems comes in we're going to edit our page again. Scroll down to where we entered this data. We delete everything. And we click on templates. 
scroll down to table and we enter the table that way. Now, okay, obviously here we have only two columns. We want to add a couple more columns. So we right click in the last column, go to columns and insert column after. And we have an extra column and we can repeat this process until we have as many columns as we want. This is column after, and the same can be done for rows in the last row or any row for that matter. Click right click the mouse button and click um, insert row after, and it inserts the next row. Now, while we're here, okay, we'll get to that later. Okay, let's try and see what happens now. Say heading one, heading two, heading. Three, four, five, six. I'm just going to demonstrate something else here as well. Um, we're going to leave this one, leave it blank, and we're going to use here, say, um, row one, row two. Row three. Now, why I'm doing this is I'm going to demonstrate something. Right click anywhere in a table and say table properties. And we have here a header. If you click headers first row and OK, then it makes my first row define them as header. Now, it automatically bolts them. Now, if I go again and I select um, first column as header. Then this is normal data, and this is row headers. And likewise, if I go and select both, then both my first row and my first column will be headers. And I can just, then they will be bolted automatically, and looks nice. Right, so we go here with data 1, data 2, data 3. Data four, data five, data, 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 data. Just tapping in placeholders again. All right, there's our table complete. And we scroll down and hit the update button to save the work. Go to our page, re reload this page, and see what happens. Okay, everything looks like the way it should. So let's resize our page and see what happens if we get to a smaller page, or if if, if you get to a point where the the information in the table is wider than the viewport. Keep on going down. Keep on going down. <coughs> that page is but messed up right anyway. There we are where we want to be. There's my normal data compression or adjusting, going smaller, smaller, smaller. Once my table is s smaller or rather is wider than the viewport, a horizontal scroll bar is added where the user can scroll left and right. So no matter how wide this table is, it's always going to be visible. Now, as you can see here, there's one other thing that's a bit of a mess up here. Um, the heading 2, heading 3, and row 1, row 2 is the headers, but they truncate um, the, uh, not, well, not truncate, but sh um, split the, the, the head headings over two rows. We don't really want that, so let's go back here and we go and edit our table once again, one last time. Edit, and the trick would be to make all these headings right click in this cell, right click. And we say um, cell property. And we say word wrap no. Okay. And we do that for each of our cells that we want to use or that is being used as headers. And we don't want to words to wrap around cell properties word wrap. No, okay, that one, cell, 
shell properties word wrap no okay right click shell properties word wrap no right. uh, they all set to they won't wrap around now now in this case of our of our column we only need to do the widest one because um, that's a, it, the widest one will force the others to not wrap around. So if we right click in this one, cell and properties, word wrap, no. Okay. And then we should be all set. Update. Go to my responsive table, reload this page, and let's resize and see what happens. Resizing, resizing, getting, getting adjusted, and there's my responsive slider kicked in, and my rows and my headings are still the way I want them to be, easily readable, and working perfect. Let's get back to that, and that's how easy it is to get your tables to align properly and look the way you want them to be. Thanks for watching.